we are going to now discuss about uh, cubic unit cells and the atoms which are present in each type start with the crystalline solid i would like you to imagine a wall which is definitely made up of bricks now to make a wall you need to have bricks which are lined row wise and therefore i can say that the brick is the repeating unit or the wall is made up of bricks bricks are repeated and that is how you get a wall similarly even in a crystalline solid you do have repeating units and they are called as the unit cells so in short i can say that a crystalline solid is made up of unit cells now the question is how do unit cells look like or how are they represented let us understand that now before we talk about the structure we need to understand that crystalline solids are basically a three dimensional structure so dimensional structure it's very simple first we need to understand about the one dimension as we know crystalline solids are made up of atoms we take atoms in one dimension that is if i take a single linear row of atoms it would be called as an one dimension what do you mean by two dimension now if i take rows of these atoms now these rows would be taken as a two dimension if we have to convert a two dimension to a three dimension figure it's very simple you need to place atoms below and above the concerned row of atoms so if i have this layer of atoms if i place atoms below this layer and above this layer what i get is a three dimension structure i would get for example now if i take a two dimension structure and if i place atoms below the structure and if i place atoms above the structure what i get would be an three dimension structure now students you must understand that it is very difficult to represent a three dimension structure on paper or on the board so the very simple thing to represent a three dimension structure is you need to join the centers of these spheres now when i join the centers of these spheres what i notice is that i get a cube once i get this cube i need to represent the atoms i can clearly see that there are eight atoms four in the front and four at the so i can say that whenever you have in intersection of any two lines that intersection would represent an atom now this is the way how a unit cell is represented now most of the crystalline solids have such type of an arrangement of an atoms and this type of an arrangement of an atom is called as a simple or primitive cubic unit cell short form is cc cubic unit cell let us see the different parts of this unit cell you have the edge which is the side of the cubic unit cell you also have the atoms which are placed they are placed at the vertices or the corners and you also have the face of the unit cell so if i have to tell you the number of vertices if you count it will be 8 the number of faces would be 6 and the number of edges would be 12 now this is one arrangement of atoms present in a crystalline solid you also can have for example now you may have a crystalline solid having an arrangement similar to that of the simple cubic unit cell but in addition they may also have an atom at the body center such type of an arrangement 
is called as a body centered cubic unit cell given by bcc you may also have atoms at each and every face of the cubic unit cell and such type of an arrangement is called as the face centered cubic unit cell or fcc type of a structure please uh, understand that different crystalline solids would have different arrangement of atoms but the most common ones are the cc the bcc and the fcc type of an unit cell now the very important question which we are going to know is how many atoms are present in each type of unit cell now if i ask you in case of bcc unit of cell unit cell how many atoms are present you will definitely you will count the number of atoms and you will tell me it is 9 in case of fcc you will tell me that the number of atoms present are 14 but is this answer right it is wrong why i tell you because this is the structure of a crystalline solid it's three dimension structure as i told you there would be atoms which would be placed or which would be surrounding a layer of atoms there would be atoms above the layer below the layer on side wise also so it is very difficult to understand how many atoms would be actually be present in a cc structure fcc structure or a bcc structure so in this case how do you understand how many atoms are actually present in each type of unit cell to understand that you have certain rules let us go for the rules let us understand them one by one we go for now imagine you have four rectangular blocks as shown here and you place a red colored sphere above this rectangular blocks which are four in number now above the sphere you again place four rectangular blocks now my question to you is the sphere is now touching how many blocks definitely you will tell me that the red sphere is shared or it is touching eight blocks or i can even say that the each block contains only 1/8 of the red sphere now let us consider only one of the blocks now okay having the red sphere now if i have to observe what is exactly the structure if i see that definitely the rectangular block it represents the upper view of the unit cell is a upper view and at the same time i notice that the red sphere is located at the vertices now if i have to now see now if i have to modify the structure okay now let me see it let me see the same structure at a different view or a different angle that is how i get to see the structure i can clearly see that there are eight unit cells here or the eight blocks which i had taken and i can clearly see that all the eight blocks have one atom or one sphere which i can take here so one atom is shared by eight unit cells and so therefore eight unit cells are sharing one particle we have the first rule which says that every particle at the vertices or the corners would contribute to 1/8 to the unit cell this is the rule number 1 from suppose you have now two rectangular blocks and i place again a red sphere above it and above the red sphere i place again the two rectangular blocks definitely i can tell you that the red sphere is now 
in touch with four blocks. Let us just focus on one block. I can see that the location of the red sphere is basically at the edge center. So the rule number two is that every particle at the edge center would contribute one fourth to the unit cell. Let us again take uh, two unit cells and now I am trying to place a particle at the face center. This is the face center. Now I can clearly see that every particle at the face center is shared by two unit cells. And therefore the rule number three would be that every particle at the face center would contribute only half to the unit cell. Four now. Now if I place a particle at the body center, if I am asking you now, how many unit cells would be sharing this particular red sphere? You tell me it would be none. So the rule number four says that every particle placed within the body center belongs only to that particular unit cell. Now we come back to the simple cubic unit cell. Now my question to you is, how many particles are present per unit cell in case of a simple cubic unit cell? Let me count the number of corners of vertices. It is basically 8. And as per rule number 1, it says that every particle at the corner would contribute only 1 eighth of to the unit cell. And therefore, it would be 8 into 1 upon 8 that comes to 1 atom. So if I have to understand that the total number of particles which will be present in case of an CC unit cell would be 1 atom. That is the BCC unit cell. Let us see now the number of particles present in case of BCC unit cell. Now let me count the number of corners or the vertices. It would be 8. As per rule number 1, the total number of atoms contributed at the corners would be equal to 8 into 1 upon 8 that comes to 1 atom. At the same time I notice that there is also one particle at the body center. And therefore the total number of atoms which will be as per rule 4 would be equal to 1 atom. Thus the total number of atoms in a BCC unit cell would be 1 atom plus 1 atom that comes to 2 atoms. <coughs> now the next common type of unit cell that is the face centered cubic unit cell. Let's check out in face FCC model what would be the number of atoms present. Number of particles at corners will be equal to 8. Therefore, as per rule number 1, the total number of atoms would be equal to 8 into 1 upon 8 that comes to 1 atom. Now, in addition to the particles at the corners, you also have particles or atoms present at the faces. And the total number is 6. So as per rule number 3, the total number of atoms contributed to the phase center will be 6 into 1 upon 2 that comes to 3 atoms. Therefore, the total number of atoms which are present in case of an FCC unit cell will be equal to how much? 1 atom plus 3 atoms that comes total to 4 atoms.